have got. Their return depends on many unpredictable factors, to say the least. The final test being a six-day affair meant that your really keen cricket fan got to the Oval early and came well-equipped to stay there to the very end. Cues, in fact, soon formed and various methods were adopted for passing the time until the gates were opened. When Hassett won the toss again, he equaled Sir Stanley Jackson's 1905 record of winning all five in a series. England had to take the field, of course, a serious disadvantage in this crucial match. Edridge, too, played a sterling innings. But with his score at 37, May was out to a fine catch by Davidson. Forty-four more runs to get now, and Compton as Edridge's partner. Betzer opened the attack, which for the first time in these tests included Freddie Truman expresses. But once again, it was Betzer who got Morris out after he'd made 16. Then Bailey got a very useful wicket, that great batsman Miller being LBW for only one run. England was certainly making a good start. Presently, the Australian captain was sent back just after passing his half century. Harvey stayed to reach 36 before being caught by Hutton off Truman. Godfrey Evans was in fine form, one of his four catches behind the sticks accounting for de Courcy. Hole was another of his dismissals off Truman's bowling. Alec Bedser got his 39th wicket of the series, beating Morris Tate's long-standing record when he dismissed Archer. But alas for England, Lindwall came to Australia's rescue. Passing his 50, he went on to make 62, and the Aussies eventually reached a first innings total of 275. Well, it might have been better and it might have been worse. Lindwall did his best to get Hutton out. But the English skipper only lost his cap, not his wicket, before an appeal against the light was upheld and the first day's cricket ended.